Welcome to the show. Uh, a few months ago when I started forging for the first time, one of my biggest concerns was where to find metal that I could use for forging. And at that time I didn't really know very much about metal. So when I checked some videos online, I saw that there were quite a few people that were forging with rebar and I thought, hey, I'll give that a try. And I didn't know a whole lot about rebar, but I thought it was lower carbon. But one thing I noticed was that a few YouTubers were actually making knives and were hardening them. So I started experimenting myself, but at that time I couldn't really put a decent edge on a knife anyway, so it didn't much matter. But as I've learned more of the craft and I've acquired some new tools, I've started to put edges on knives that I'm making. So today I thought what I would do is, um, is test this idea that rebar can indeed be hardened. To do that, I cut a length of rebar, hammered it out flat on the anvil, and cut it into three pieces. And originally I was going to make three actual knives, or at least knife shapes. But to do the test that I wanted to do, I wasn't really going to do an edge test. I was just going to do a, um, a strength test where I bend them, pound them, you know, see if and when they will break. And if it makes any difference, whether they're hardened in oil, hardened in water, or not hardened at all. So I did my best to make each of them about even, about one eighth inch uh, thick. I think they might actually have come out closer to three sixteenths, but right in there, one eighth to three sixteenths inch thick, and uh, they're they're pretty consistent with each other. They're, you know, I didn't put calipers on them, but they're they're pretty consistent to each other. I knew that if I had a nice clean metal surface, uh, that I should be able to see. Uh, for example, if I went to harden it and it cracked when it hit the water, I'd be able to see that crack. Um, because later when I do the sort of stress testing of them, I want to make sure that if I get a break or something in there, that it's not just breaking along a crack, that it's, but that the test is actually reflective of the strength of the steel. So I probably took a little longer than I should have cleaning them up. But the perfectionist in me really wanted to see that metal shine. Once I had all three of them cleaned up, I put them all in the forge together. And the first one I quenched in water. Then I placed that one on top of the water can so that I wouldn't forget which one was which. I took the next one and I quenched in oil. So I figured that if they were going to harden, that was about as hard as they were going to get in their respective quenching media. So the last piece, of course, I did not quench, uh, but I heated it up red hot and then I let it normalize in the forge so it would essentially be fully annealed. I took the one that I had quenched in water. I didn't temper any of these because I just wanted to see how hard they were and how brittle they were after the quenching. So I pounded on it a few times with the hammer. Uh, the smaller hammer didn't really seem to do a lot, but when I got out the big hammer, the one that I had quenched in water snapped almost immediately. It was a very clean snap. There was no bending. It just broke right off. But the amazing thing was that the oil quenched one actually bent not quite to 90 degrees, but it bent over a long ways before it snapped. Uh, it was almost like performance that you might expect out of steel that you had quenched and then really tempered, like tempered way back. And then finally I took the annealed piece and as you might expect, I bent it completely over and as you'll see here, I even put it back in the vise after it was bent over most of the way and pressed it the rest of the way and bent it to a very, uh, bent it 180 degrees back on itself. So I would say, looking at the results I got from this rebar, uh, the rebar definitely hardened. Now, I didn't do any specific tests for Rockwell strength or anything like that. I don't have the equipment that I need to do that. Uh, but when you see steel become that brittle, you know it has hardened, at least somewhat. Now, there are a lot more tests that could be done, and I might do some other tests like edge retention and so on. Uh, but one thing I would say is understand that if you're using rebar for these projects, there are a lot of different kinds of rebar. And... Oh, it's almost impossible to know what the composition is of the different kinds of rebar. It's not like you can go to the manufacturer's website and read their instructions for uh, heat treating and tempering. 
So if you're planning to sell knives professionally, uh, working knives, knives that people will be using, I would probably generally stay away from rebar. But if what you want is what a lot of people want, a cheap way to practice the craft, to learn different aspects of it, you can buy it just about anywhere. I live in a fairly remote part of Arizona, and I can find many suppliers for rebar where I live, and it's really inexpensive. Anyway, thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, give me a like, subscribe to the channel, and leave me a comment. And if you want to see me do more tests with rebar, testing maybe um, edge retention and things like that, let me know, and uh, I might do that in the future. So thanks for joining me. Have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video.